Today's video is all about ground beef. And if you're looking for some new dinner ideas that are easy to make and perfect for any night of the week, you are in the right place. Hey y'all, I'm Valerie and welcome to my kitchen. Today, I have partnered up with ButcherBox to bring you five delicious ground beef dinner recipes that I'm pretty sure you're gonna love. I'll tell you more about ButcherBox here shortly, but for now, let's go ahead and get started. This cheesy enchilada hamburger helper came together in less than 30 minutes, and it's a new family favorite. In a large skillet, I added one diced onion along with one pound of ground beef. And I'm telling you, this butcher box meat is very high quality and I can really tell a difference. I just broke that up and let it cook until that ground beef was completely cooked through. When that's done, I just used a paper towel to get rid of most of that grease. Now we're gonna go ahead and add some seasonings. I did a tablespoon of minced garlic, a half a teaspoon each of salt and pepper, two teaspoons of chili powder, but if you don't like heat, you can cut that in half. If you do like heat, you can add a fourth of a teaspoon of cayenne, but I omitted that. And I also added a teaspoon of cumin. I just stirred that around a little bit just to get those seasonings mixed in. Then I added in one cup of beef broth and two 10 ounce cans of the mild enchilada sauce. I was also supposed to add one cup of milk here, but I forgot. Uh, I eventually got it in there, but it was just a little late. Now I'm adding in two and a half cups of the medium shell pasta. Now you're gonna stir that and make sure all that pasta is completely submerged in that liquid. Mine would have been a lot better if I had already added that milk like I was supposed to, but oh well. Sometimes I just get ahead of myself. <laughs> and I'm telling you, as soon as I put that lid on, I looked over and seen the milk. And that was just one cup of regular 2% milk I added in. By the way, I did bring that to a boil, then I turned it down to medium low. I covered it. I did stir it halfway through just to make sure nothing stuck to the bottom but I did let it cook for a total of about 12 minutes. And once that pasta was tender, I added one cup of shredded cheese. I stirred it to get it all well combined. Then to finish it off, we're gonna top it with another cup of shredded cheese. And feel free to use more or less, just depending on what your family will like. We love cheese though, so I always add a little bit extra. And I did a combination of cheddar and Colby Jack. I did turn the heat off though, and I put that lid back on just until that cheese was melted. All I got to say is, wow, this one was so good. If you're looking for a dinner that comes together quick, but still absolutely delicious, this is it. I topped ours with sour cream and a little more shredded cheese. Oh, and by the way, after this sits for a little bit, it really, really thickens up because when it's first done, it is very saucy, but just let it sit and it'll be just fine. And I will be making this one again, especially on those busy weeknights. If you're in the mood for some good old hamburgers, you've got to try these ranch burgers. I made them in a skillet on the stovetop, but I will for sure be making some to throw on the grill this summer. In a large bowl, I added one pound of this high quality butcher box ground beef. I also added two tablespoons of ranch seasoning mix, along with one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and four teaspoons of liquid steak seasoning. My favorite is the Dell's steak seasoning, but today I'm just using the generic. This is the Ingalls brand for those of you that have one of these near you. And y'all, anytime I can find a similar item for a little cheaper, I'm on it. And now we're kicking it up a notch. I'm adding one third cup of cooked and finely chopped bacon and half a cup of crushed French fried onions. And I just poured mine in a Ziploc bag and beat them with my rolling pin. And I don't know why I do this every time I pull out my dough whisk to kind of get started but you know, nothing's better than just getting in there with your hands. Now we're taking that mixture and we're gonna form it into three one-third pound hamburger patties. 
but if you want to stretch it and make them a little smaller, you go right ahead. I'm sure that will be just fine. Now we're going to take these and head over to the stove top. I've already got my skillet hot and ready. I did add a little oil in there, then I added in those hamburgers. I let them cook for about five minutes, then I flipped them and let them continue to cook until they were done. Y'all let me know if you want to see more burger recipes like this. Oh, and I do have a potluck recipe video coming out soon. Oh, and would y'all like to see recipes on the grill? I don't have a really good one, but it gets the job done. When those are done, you can remove them from the heat and it's time to make you a good old hamburger. I just threw some fries in the air fryer to go along with them, but you could also do some oven roasted potatoes, some potato salad, coleslaw, or even some oven roasted veggies. These were a 10 out of 10. I want to take a moment to say a big thank you to ButcherBox for sponsoring today's video. You may already know who they are, but just in case you don't, ButcherBox is a meat subscription service where you're able to decide what cuts of meat you want and have them delivered straight to your door. You're getting the highest quality meat at an affordable price and you get to enjoy free shipping. They've got 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, humanely raised pork, and wild-caught seafood. I love ButcherBox because you're getting the highest quality meats from a company who's dedicated to doing the right thing. They believe in caring for animal welfare, supporting farmers, and treating our planet with respect. Their meats are frozen at peak freshness and sent directly to you. They're individually wrapped so you can just put them in your freezer and grab something out and thaw it out as you need it. And let's talk about the price. You have two different box options, a curated box and a custom box. The curated box is $146. You'll get eight to 11 pounds of meat and that ends up making enough for about 24 meals. With the custom box, you get to select specific cuts of meat. It's $169. You get nine to 14 pounds of meat and that's enough for about 30 meals for your family. But your box also saves you time. You order what you need of the highest quality meats and they're delivered right to your door. Right now, you can get three pounds of chicken breast or one pound of steak or two pounds of salmon free in every order for a year. Be sure to click the link below to see this month's exclusive limited time offers and see how ButcherBox can help your family. By the way, I was extremely impressed by everything I received from them. Thank you again to ButcherBox for sponsoring today's video. When I seen this ground beef and broccoli, I knew my family would love it. I'm starting out on the counter in a small bowl. I'm just making up a little cornstarch slurry. I'm doing two tablespoons of cornstarch and two tablespoons of water. And you're just gonna stir it until all the lumps are gone. Then you're gonna set it to the side. We'll use it a little later. We're gonna use it to thicken up the sauce. Now we're gonna make up that sauce. In a medium sized bowl, I added one cup of beef broth along with one fourth cup of soy sauce. I use the low sodium kind. I'm also adding three tablespoons of packed brown sugar. If you wanted to reduce that to two tablespoons, I'm sure it'd be just fine. The recipe called for two tablespoons of honey. I didn't have any, so I used maple syrup. Also, a teaspoon of minced garlic, and you don't want to skip this one, a teaspoon of toasted sesame oil, and I did about a half a teaspoon of ginger paste. Then we're going to stir that up. Make sure you get that ginger broke up and stirred up there. Then we're going to set this to the side, along with that cornstarch slurry, and it'll be ready when we need them. Now over to the stove top in a large skillet, I'm adding one pound of ground beef along with one small diced onion. You're just gonna break that up and let it cook until that ground beef is cooked through. By the way, if you're new, I would really love to have you here. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. That way you get notified of all my future videos. Okay, I just used a paper towel to get rid of most of that grease. Now I'm adding three cups of fresh broccoli florets and I did cut them into smaller bite-sized pieces. You're also gonna add one chopped red bell pepper. 
but if you love peppers, feel free to add a little bit more. It's only going to add to the flavor, I'm telling you. Also, go ahead and season to taste with some salt and pepper. And you're going to let this continue to cook for about five minutes or so until that broccoli starts to get tender. I did cover mine, by the way. When those veggies are cooked to the way you like them, you can go ahead and add in that sauce. And y'all, this sauce is what really makes this recipe. Didn't mean to drop my ball in there, though. I guess I needed to hold on to it a little better. And look, I was not wasting any of it. Now we're going to add in that cornstarch slurry. Just make sure to give it another stir because that cornstarch will settle to the bottom of the bowl. Now you're going to toss everything in that sauce, get it all mixed together, bring that mixture to a bowl, then reduce the heat to a simmer and let it simmer until that sauce has reached your desired thickness. I'll let mine simmer for about five minutes. And if you want this to be completely low carb, you could just leave that cornstarch slurry out. The sauce wouldn't be as thick, but hey, throw you in a bag of steamed cauliflower rice and you'll be good to go. I served ours over white rice and topped it with sesame seeds. This was so good. It came together quick. It was delicious. It was packed full of flavor and it's perfect to make any night of the week. Oh, and my husband, Craig, he's not too crazy about vegetables, but he loved this one. This cowboy spaghetti was a new family favorite for sure. I'm starting out in a large skillet. You're going to fry up six slices of bacon. I did a little extra just because we love bacon. My daughter, Lacey, loves bacon. <laughs> she could just have a meal of just bacon. And if I'm cooking bacon to chop up, I just always go ahead and cut it into smaller pieces. For me personally, it's just easier to cook that way. You're just going to cook it until crispy, remove it to a paper towel on plate, and set it aside. And be sure to leave that bacon grease in the pan there. That's going to add even more flavor. I also added one pound of ground beef and one small diced onion. You're just going to break this up and let it cook until that ground beef is no longer pink. Now I'm getting rid of that excess grease. Next, you're going to add one teaspoon of minced garlic. Just toss that around and let it cook for about a minute or so. The recipe called for one can of crushed fire roasted tomatoes. I didn't have any. I did have this tomato salsa, so I used that instead. It did, however, make it a little on the spicy side, but we enjoyed it. You're also going to add a can of mild Rotel and an 8 ounce can of tomato sauce. I also added half a cup of beef broth and a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And if you want it spicy, you can add a teaspoon or two of hot sauce. For the seasonings, I just did a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. Now just stir until combined. By the way, if y'all are enjoying these easy recipes, be sure to hit that like button. That really does help out my channel. You're going to let that sauce simmer for about 15 minutes while that's simmering away. I cooked up one pound of angel hair pasta and I just cooked it according to the box instructions. I was going to add it all, but it looked like it was going to be a lot for me. So I ended up only adding about three fourths of that pasta. So next time I'll only cook up about 12 ounces of pasta. You're just going to mix all this together to get that spaghetti completely covered in that sauce. Then you can go ahead and add in that cooked and crumbled bacon. And I got to know how many of y'all have to hide bacon when you cook it for recipes. I have to because if not, there won't be anything to add in. The recipe said to serve with shredded cheese, but I decided to add it right on into the spaghetti there. This was absolutely delicious and I'm so glad I tried it. But you know what? I don't care what way you make it. Spaghetti is always a good thing. It's like here if I've been busy and hadn't thought what to make for dinner. I can always guarantee I can make spaghetti and everyone's going to be happy. And this recipe definitely wasn't lacking in the flavor department. With that bacon, that just took it to a whole nother level. This chili and cornbread casserole was so easy to put together. I'm starting out by making up some cornbread first. In a large bowl, I added one box of the Jiffy Corn Muffin Mix. I also added a 15 ounce can of cream style corn. 
two eggs, and a half a cup of milk. By the way, what do y'all want to see more of? Beef recipes or chicken recipes? Either way, I have more of both coming your way. Oh, and to that cornbread mixture, you're also going to add in one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. And you can do this by hand, but I already had my mixer out, so I just mixed it until it was well combined. I'm using a 9 by 13 baking dish, and you do want to make sure you spray it with some kind of nonstick spray. Then go ahead and pour in that cornbread mixture. And you're just going to spread it out into kind of an even layer. Now this is going into a preheated 400 degree oven for 20 minutes. While that's in the oven, we can start on the chili mixture. In a large skillet, I'm adding one pound of ground beef. I'm just going to break that up and let it cook until that ground beef is completely cooked through. Now I'm just using a paper towel to get rid of that grease. Now you're just going to add in one packet of chili seasoning, and I'm using the mild kind, and I used great value. But the Chili O brand one is a real good one too. Now I'm adding in one can of chili beans and one can of diced tomatoes, and both of those were undrained. Oh, and also an 8 ounce can of tomato sauce. Now just mix this together until it's all well combined. I started out just using my tongs. I was trying to avoid dirtying up something else, but then I had to break out a spoon. I just let this sit here and simmer for about five minutes. Then we can remove it from the heat and head over to the counter so we can put all this together. That cornbread layer is out of the oven. And remember, it won't be completely cooked through at this point. You're just going to go ahead and pour that chili mixture right on top. Then you're going to spread it out to where it completely covers all of that cornbread. Then we're going to top this casserole off with another cup or two of shredded cheddar cheese. Now this is going back into the oven to continue to bake for 20 more minutes. When it's done, you do want to let it cool down for about five minutes, just so it can kind of set so it don't fall apart when you try to serve it. We love chili and we love cornbread, and this recipe right here was a crowd pleaser. If you're craving some comfort food, this is definitely one you need to try. We all thought it was delicious. I really hope you enjoyed this video. You may also like these. Don't forget to check out ButcherBox. I'll have them linked in my description box below, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, here's my. You gonna smile for everybody? You gonna smile for everybody? Look, right here. Right here. Look right here. Wave. Say bye bye. Blow kisses. Mwah. Say cheese. Say cheese. She Look, there's kiss. Lainey. There's Lainey. <laughs> oh. Take one. Okay, go. <laughs> Take 523,100 billion. <laughs> <laughs> Say Papa. Welcome to my new boutique. My new boutique. Say, mmm. -hmm.